Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Today you're gonna learn how to avoid the green sky syndrome, something that plagues a lot of people. You're trying to paint the sky and going gradually from warm, from cool to warm, from blue to yellow, you end up with a big ugly green in the middle like you see here. Um, and I will provide three solutions for you on how to solve this. Now, but before we get to the solutions, let's explore the problem. So you get started right with your wash and you go from blue the beautiful blue of the sky, in this example it's a, an ultramarine blue, and then you're like, okay, now it gets warm, so I'm just gonna grab a bit of yellow here, and I'm gonna start doing this kind of a thing, right, and look at what you end up with in the middle, it's a terrible, terrible thing, right? Now, in some cases you go and mix it over on the palette, and then you get the green right on the palette. So I'm gonna show you three surefire ways to solve this. The first one is, and this is gonna be a guiding principle all throughout this video, uh, is to mute everything. The way I paint always, almost always, is I'm gonna be using my three primary colors in every color mix. So my blue is gonna have a bit of red, a bit of yellow. My yellow is gonna have a bit of blue and a bit of red. That's always how I paint. So let me show you. I'm gonna start here. Yes, it's gonna be blue mainly, and sorry, it's a bit dark, I know, uh, but you should be able to see some of it. Uh, and then I'm gonna add a bit of red, and I'm gonna add a bit of yellow. And I'm, what I'm actually gonna do is kind of gray this out in a way, make this gray. Can you see how gray this is? Let me show you here. It's quite gray. And from that gray, I can jump ahead into my blue and increase it ever so slightly to make this mix more blue dominated, right? And then you can do it as blue as you want, but um, I like to, again, have like 30% of this be uh, yellow and red, right? And the rest is blue. And then I'm gonna get started on <clears throat> my sky here. I'm gonna go fairly light, okay? So this is muting everything. That's the first solution, sorry about that. That's my fun, I'm gonna mute it because I'm waiting for a delivery. Now, as we move down here, I'm gonna start bringing in some yellow, but look at the yellow I'm bringing. That's gonna be muted as well. So I'm using a bit of everything to mix my yellow, and it's not even a yellow, it's more of a warm. So look at what happens here. Look at how this is just such a beautiful transition from cool to warm. And then here, if you wanna increase the yellow, go ahead and add some yellow to your mix. Maybe even lighten it up if it's a sunset or the light's coming from below. You can do a whole bunch of things here, like so. And there you go. Now, what was the magic trick here? We used all three primary colors, French ultramarine, ultramarine blue, quinacridone rose, and Indian yellow to mix each and every paint here. So what you end up with is a blue that has a bit of red and yellow in it, and a yellow that has a bit of red and blue in it. So the middle is muted rather than green. The red here plays a supportive role because it's present both here and here. And that's a very important idea to wrap your head around. The beauty does not come from a strong, blue next to a strong yellow. That's actually very amateurish looking. What you want is a nice balance and then you can crank up the saturation on a specific color of your choosing like this red, this yellow here, or maybe you put in a detail later on that has a bit of a stronger color, right? So that's that. Now, the next method is gonna be using water as a buffer, which is something I do quite often. So imagine I have this vast sky. Now this is gonna be just this, but imagine a vast sky. What I'll often do is get the top part of the sky down with my cool mix. Remember, think about this as temperatures, not as blue, yellow, right? Not hues, not hues. You want to go beyond just hue. Hue is the color. Is it this red or that red or this orange? That's a hue. Hue is just a color wheel. You want to go beyond that. So what I'll sometimes do is I'll put a bit of my um, sky wash and then I'll put a bit of my ground kind of warm-ish wash. And again, think about this beyond colors. This is more about temperatures. And then I'll just use my water to create a buffer area between the two. And look at what happens here. The two barely mix together, right? And then you get this kind of a beautiful, smooth and easygoing transition. Now, a big part of getting this right is still muting. That, that's a principle that's gonna go throughout this entire thing. 
okay? Now, if you don't want to use water as a buffer for some reason, I have a great solution for you and you're gonna like this one because it's one I'm starting to experiment with and have a lot of fun with, and that is using opaque paint. Now, I have here a John Brilliant, which everyone asks me about. It's this color right here by Shenhan PWC, one of my favorite um, opaque watercolors. It is a watercolor, it's not an acrylic paint, it's not gouache, it is watercolor. One of my favorites is a, kind of a yellowy, um, uh, neutralized yellow opaque paint, which is great. I have it here on my palette in the corner, and if you want to see it on my palette, it's right here. And this is wonderful. This can be used as a buffer. What this does is make the paint more milky, and I'm gonna show you. And it will even allow you to use stronger saturated colors and still not uh, mess up the, the thing. So we're gonna go more for a blue, right? Not just a cool. So here we go, a bit of blue. Now look at what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna introduce a bit of that John Brilliant. Now it's very important, it's best to use it out of the tube, otherwise it really hardens. So I just put it right now on my palette, like a couple of minutes ago. And look at what it does, it makes this a little milky, right? And that's your buffer. And then once you switch over to this mix, and even if you bring in more yellow and you increase it, you still get, see this quite a, and I'm gonna add just a bit of red there. You still get quite an individual separate yellow. And look at that, right? You can really see it. And I have a couple of attempts I made here to the side. This one is the same kind of a thing, using that opaque thing. I just mixed a bit more of an orange, but it's similar colors, right? And that way you avoid this disaster of a, of a sky, right? And I see this all the time. The, and, and I cannot stress this enough, no matter how many times I say it, people still keep making this mistake. Disregard the idea of color. The painting is not about put the blue here and the red here and the green for the foliage here. It's not about that. It's all contextual, right? The light and shadow influence everything. So what's far more important for me, at least, is to get the temperature and overall feel correctly rather than try and match each and every single color I see. Like if I start to try and match this red and then this black and then this every color here, the colors in the background, right? This beautiful painting by John. Now, if I try to match each and every color that I'm doomed, there's no way. But if I look at the overall pattern, the values get precedence, for me at least. If I do that, I will be able to avoid it. The one trick I can give you is go beyond colors and get into temperatures and contextual, right? Because this looks super warm here, but what if I were to paint a strong red right next to it, right? If I go ahead and do this, just kind of an extra bonus point, I do this, Look at how cool and neutralized it looks now, right? So it's all contextual. Here, in the context, it looks warm. You don't need strong yellow and strong blue. It's one of the main causes for amateurish looking paintings, especially in watercolor. It looks like that's very prevalent. So I hope that tips helps. And if it does, I urge you, if you haven't checked out my frustration-free watercolor, if you wanna learn how to let go, enjoy the painting process and, and get the results you want, have fun, get the, the right contrast, the right value, create beautiful atmospheric works, paint more a la prima and direct, enjoy it, let go, don't be so rigid. Check it out, link in the description box below. I highly recommend you check it out and you will get an offer for the new watercolor realism course as well. Highly recommend you check these out. Also the drawing course, you can find a link in the description box. And finally, if you want your paintings critiqued by me one-on-one -on -one every month, check out the new Patreon tier. I do that there. It's 50 bucks a month and you get 30 minutes every month with me to do this kind of a thing where we go through as many paintings as we can. I give you specific feedback on what to improve. I wanna thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You make it possible for me to make a living as an artist from what I love, which I'm grateful for every single day. So leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you aren't, and I will see you in the next video.